Baseball settling on the numbers 20 games, $50,000. Rogers immediately appealed the penalty, so he is eligible to play until his hearing. Rangers lefty threw a violent fit, wiped out a couple of cameras and a cameraman Wednesday. Contract and injury stress apparently contributing to his outburst. Shelly Smith with the Rangers and with reaction. His 20 game suspension under appeal. Kenny Rogers approached Friday like any other day, getting some side work in in anticipation of starting on Sunday. He threw very well. Uh, he seemed to be very healthy and decent spirits for what's going on. We knew there was going to be some type of suspension, so, you know, uh, we'd like to know what it's going to be and start dealing with it. Rogers did not speak with reporters, and his attorney issued a statement saying, in part, that Kenny is truly sorry for the incident that occurred and regrets that it happened. I'm surprised that he hasn't made comment, but uh, it, you know that that really that that's not really a, uh, that's at the back of my mind. Uh, just uh, getting better and getting back to work is probably the thing I, I want to do most. From an organizational standpoint, um, uh, we've we've made it very clear from the beginning. This is not uh, uh, behavior that uh, we condone. Um, Kenny's a grown man. Uh, he's uh, 40 years old. He's been around a long time. Uh, he made a mistake. And uh, um, that's, uh, that's how we view this. It's something that we're all ser sorry about, we're all embarrassed about, and I think the whole game of baseball is, uh, is damaged by it, but we'll recover. Rangers pitching coach Oral Hershiser said Rogers met the decision with quiet resolve and hope that his appeal will reduce the suspension. Hershiser says they will juggle their rotation while he's gone, noting that replacing one of the best pitchers in the American League for any amount of time doesn't come easy. In Seattle, I'm Shelly Smith, ESPN. Thank you, Shelly. Here's Bud Selig's thoughts on the matter. Mr. Rogers' behavior was unprofessional, unwarranted, and completely unacceptable. Major League Baseball is a social institution, and all of us in the game have an important responsibility to act with reason and good judgment. While I recognize that the relationship between players and members of the media may sometimes be difficult, there is no circumstance in which a player may settle a difference of opinion or dispute through physical means. Media coverage is important to the game, and we in baseball are obligated to treat members of the media with respect and civility. And opinions from other dugouts. I'm sure uh, it's not something he's proud of, but, you know, we all have our fuses, and, you know, what set it off, I don't know, but... I knew there would be a substantial uh, fine and suspension, and I'm sure, uh, you know, that's, that's something they'll take care of there. It's hard to put a, a, a game or a, what's appropriate for a fine like that. Um, you know, all you can say is it's an unfortunate incident, and um, obviously violence isn't the answer in any case, and I'm, I'm not too sure what led up to it, but I can't imagine anything being that bad to provoke that kind of response. The unfortunate thing is it just doesn't affect him, it affects his whole team. You know, that, that, that incident affected 25 players, and they're in the, the hunt for a playoff, playoff race. And, um, you know, so, you know, it's not just about him. It's about his whole team. Well, Rogers is among the longest non-drug-related suspensions in baseball in the last 20 years. 1988 Reds manager Pete Rose got 30 days for shoving umpire Dave Pallone and inciting fans in Cincinnati. In 2000, John Rocker, 28 days for racist remarks made in a Sports Illustrated article. Last season, Rangers pitcher Frank Francisco, you'll remember, threw a chair at fans in Oakland and was suspended for the final 16 games of the season. And now Rogers given 20 games and fined 50 grand for his outburst and sent a cameraman to the hospital and prompted a police investigation. 20 games and $50,000. Jeff Brantley, your thoughts. Club record with eight home runs on Thursday, including a David Lucci solo shot to lead off the game. Top one. In one uh, how about this? Another leadoff home run. Back to back games with leadoff homers for DeLucci. This one off Aaron Seeley, 1 0 Texas. DeLucci's 14th home run of the year. Texas up 3 1 in the fifth. Hammer and Hank Blaylock. Goes the other way to the left. Rod Barajas comes in. It's 4-1 Rangers. Seeley allowed six runs on nine hits in five and two-third. Top six, Lance Nix. Yard. Solo shot. His sixth. Six to Texas. The Rangers have won three in a row. Seattle now. A season worst 12 games under 500 with a seven-game winning streak hosting the White Sox. Let's check out Oakland month to month this season. You know, they came out of the gate. Well, okay, 12 and 12. You know, they lost a lot of pitchers and stuff, so that wasn't terrible. May, uh, not so much. 7 and 20. But then June, a scorching 19 and 8. Could they carry that over? 
into July. Bottom four, Jason Kendall up there, Jose Contreras, wild pitch, Bobby Kilty scores, and we are tied at two. Then in the fifth, they're loaded for Nick Swisher. Kevin Walker walks Swisher, Bobby Crosby scores, A's up 3-2. They're not exactly killing the ball here, but, you know, they're getting some wild pitches, some walks, and how about another walk? Luis Vizcaino walks Marco Scudero, former Red Sox great Scott Hatterberg scores, and the A's win their eighth straight, 6-2. Double race twins, Johan Santana scuffling, 10 runs allowed, last 11 and two thirds. Here, 3 2, twins trying run at second. Santana strikes out Johnny Gomes. Santana went six, struck out nine, left with the lead. Bullpen coughed up. Twins with the bases loaded after Sweet Lou calls from the walk. Juan Brazelton, Corey Hunter, 3 0. That's called strike. Ump usually gives you that one, 3 1. Brazelton walks Hunter, scoring Luis Rodriguez. We're tied at four. That's not good, Sweet Lou. Don't light that fuse, please. Next batter. Well, enough walking. Everybody run as fast as you can. Jock Jones clears the bases with the triple. Shannon Stewart scores. Joe Maurer scores, among others, as the Twins win it. Seven to four. 43 and 34 in the year of Minnesota now. Rockies Cardinals at Bush. Uh, Albert Pujols coming in with a 12-game hitting streak. Make that 13. Mm. Top one off Joe Kennedy is 21st of the year, and it's 1-0 Cardinals. And meanwhile, Clint Hurdle and the Rockies, you know, they're a young team. Yeah. They struggle away from home. They've won just six road games all year, and uh, Hurdle says about playing more experienced teams, well, it's like building a house. Sometimes you hit your thumb with a hammer. Sometimes you get paint in your hair. Well, you know who else can build? Chris Carpenter. Ah, yeah. Carpenter. He's been building a nice season. 3-0 with two shutouts in his last three starts. And he, well, he's just blowing guys away here. Cardinals win 6 nothing as Carpenter allows only five hits in seven and two third. He becomes Major's fourth 12-game winner this season. Carpenter. Baseman Jim Tomei to the 15-day disabled list Friday. Tendonitis in his right elbow. Told my second stint on the DL this season. He was shelved in May with lower back strain. He missed 19 games during that stretch. Meanwhile, Tomei's team has fallen eight games back in the standings as they start a three-game set with the Braves. Top four tied at one. Peter Orr at play facing Vicente Padilla. Orr grounds to third. David Bell looks, throws. You hesitate. You know what happens when you hesitate? Everybody's safe or something like that. Next batter, Kelly Johnson. Now everybody gets to pretty much trot home. He is a lumberjack. Big three-run homer. 4-1 Braves. Johnson's fifth homer of the season. Just like that, Atlanta up early. John Smoltz stealing to Andy Chavez. Look at Smoltz. He's getting over to cover. Nicely done. Smoltz gets himself out of a jam there. Two, two men and two out. Top six, Andrew Jones with two on. Walk him. Walk him. Oh, you try to tell people, sometimes they just don't listen to the sportscaster. 7-1 Braves, Jones 26th home run. That leaves the majors. Bottom six, Smoltz dealing to Chase Otley. Strikes him out. Seven strikeout game for Smoltz. He passes Warren Spahn for second on the all-time Braves franchise list. Braves win 9-1. Nationals Cubs, Mark Pryor, 3-0, 1.83 Wrigley Field this year, and he had it going. Top five rings up Brad Wilkerson. Two, two. Gets Junior Spivey and Jose Guillen. Pryor gave up three runs on six hits. He struck out the seventh. Lavon Hernandez having a tremendous season, 10-0 in his last 13 starts. Cubs down 3-0 in the sixth. That's Derek Lee. Solo home run is 24th. And back come the Cubs, perhaps. Eighth inning, it's a two-run game. They're down 4-2, and it's, it's that Lee guy again. To right, Jose Guillen. It's awful bright out there. Yeah, no clue. Absolutely <laughs> no clue. Lee, not exactly a gazelle out there. He gets all the way into third. Next up, Jeremy Burnitz, and this is gone. To right, or so we think, at least Burnitz thinks, but hold on the ball you'll see is to the right of the foul pole, which means it's a foul ball. Hernandez is upset. They're Everybody really up on all the rules. Well, you know, like there's section B, rule A. <laughs> Cur accurately called by all the umpires. They say foul. Burnett's is upset. A few pitches later. Double the left. Derek Lee scores. Cubs down 4-3. Hernandez was tanked for 10 hits and 8, but gave up only 3 runs. Todd Hollinsworth is up there. Brian Schneider picks Burnett's off, leaning third. And the Nationals win 4-3, their fourth win in a row. Hernandez ties a franchise record, his 11th straight win. Mets with six wins in nine meetings against the Marlins this season, opening a three-game set at Shea. Top three, Tom Glavin, 
Carlos Delgado to left Cliff Floyd. What a year he's oh, yeah. had. Saves a run. But Glavin still gave up nine hits in five. Marlins down 6-5 in the eighth. Luis Castillo, chopper. Infield hit. Alex Gonzalez scores. That ties it up. Castillo three for five. Bottom eight, Chris Woodward. Got a nice little play. Effective singles to center. Marlon Anderson comes in 7-6, and that's top nine. Braden Looper trying to nail down his 17th save. Gets Gonzalez. And the Mets, another exciting night in New York Mets baseball. They win 7-6. Weekend series against the Blue Jays at Fenway. July 1st marks the 138th Canada Day. Sir John McDonald was the name of Canada's first Prime Minister. John McDonald also the name of the Blue Jays shortstop. The Blue Jays have never beaten the Red Sox on Canada Day in four previous meetings. How would they fare on Canada Day 2005, you're all asking? Well, first, let's flash back to June 13th. Reds versus Red Sox. Uh, Kelly the ball girl had an ugly incident here. Missed this one. It hit the poor guy behind her right in the face. And later in that game, another foul ball. And Kelly's oh. over there, and she gets it. So we go back to Friday. Bottom two, Kevin Mala. Kelly the ball girl. Look at that play. Why can't the Padres get ball girls like this? Top six, Jays up 5-1. They're loaded two out. Reed Johnson, a pinch hit grand slam. Reed Johnson, the Blue Jays, pound Matt Clement of the Red Sox. Matt Manti, the whole deal, 15-2. Yankees Tigers, first time Randy Johnson's ever thrown at Comerica Park. If he wins there, it'll be his 40th different ballpark where he's gotten the W. This isn't going to help, though. Chris Shelton in the second. 1-1 Gabe, no longer dead center. That's a long way out there. Tigers take a 3-1 lead on Shelton's fifth. Jeremy Bonderman trying to become the first Tigers pitcher to record 10 wins before the break since Bill Gullickson did it in 91. This will help on top four. George Posada, done. Bernie Williams coming up next. Accurately called by your home plate umpire. Bottom four, Johnson trying to get some defensive help. Alex Rodriguez over there at the hot corner. Rob Brandon Inge, the dive, the throw. Excellent play by A-Rod. Bottom five, Megalor Ordonez, first game back since April 13th, but it is hard to play defense against that. Ordonez, a two-run shot off Johnson. Johnson now 18 homers allowed this year. That ties the total he gave up last year. 17 starts this year, 35 in 2004. Here, Ordonez, it's all about getting the arms out and extending his first hit of the year. Bottom nine, Bonner with the base slow to get the comeback from Tino Martinez and a complete game for him as he moves to 10 and 5 could be staying to pitch the All-Star game at home. Orioles and Tribe, Rafael Palmero, 12-game hitting streak, HI 3,000, bottom two facing CC Sabathia, long fly to left, Coco Crisp. Sabathia pitched seven and two-thirds of three-hit ball. Bottom six, Baltimore down 3-1, Rafi strikes out. 12-game hitting streak over. He was 0 for 3. In the ninth, enter Bob Wickman with a 3-1 lead, and Bob Wickman has fans all over America. Bottom nine, pinch hitter Jay Gibbons. The comebacker, Wickman to first. Hello. Oh, boy. Yeah, a little strong. And he's put the tying runs on base now. Next up, it's Chris Gomez, and boy, does he need a double play ball badly. And he gets it, 4-6-3. Tribe wins 3-1. Whitman's AL leading 22nd save. Cleveland has won 6-7. Now a season high, eight games over 500. Your lineup card, Angels, Royals, and KC. Buddy Bell, Mike Sosha out there to exchange lineup cards. Bottom one, Angel Perreau on deck. He's supposed to be leading off. David DeJesus was supposed to bat second, but he's up there. And DeJesus is supposed to be the number two hitter, but he walks up there, leads off the game with a base hit. Oh, Mike Sosha's got, he's over there in the dugout saying, hey, I got the card right here. That's not right. Home plate, I'm Jerry Crawford. You're going to talk it over. And, of course, well, this is bad because a batter shall be called out, the rules say, when he fails to bat in his proper turn and another batter completes an at-bat in his turn, which we saw with a base hit. So Barrow is correctly ruled out. You're out. Buddy Bell said, it's totally my responsibility. It was inexcusable and irresponsible. So DeJesus' hit is disallowed, but since he's officially batting second, he goes right up there and bats again. <laughs> said, he, said he had no clue what was going on. Obviously, but neither did Buddy Bell. And he flies out. All right, bottom two, Paul Bird. Facing Matt Stairs, strikes him out. Paul Bird was scintillating. A complete game two hitter obviously would have been a three hitter, but as Bird said, the first hit didn't count. 
got Emil Brown and Terrence Long. Paul Bird, Dazzling Angels, win in KC Finals. Giants Padres, San Francisco, coming off a three-game sweep of the D-backs. Bottom six, tied at two, Scott Munner in relief. The Giants facing Damian Jackson. We went out and the bases loaded. That's what you want. I'll take it, thanks. That's home for the second out, down to first. And just like that, we're out of the inning, and we remain tied. Top eight, still 2-2. Two -two. Todd Linden, Omar Vizquel, Khalil Green. That is excellent. That's only half the equation. In addition to the pick, you got to throw it. Gets away. Lennon will score. The Giants are going to blank Padres from there and win it 3-2. Diamondbacks and Dodgers. There's bad defense, and then there's good defense. Here's bad defense. Jason Phillips on third in the fifth. L.A. up 2-0. Oscar Robles, suicide squeeze. Javier Vasquez, that's a bad throw there. It's 3-0 Dodgers. Bob Melvin, your thoughts. Exactly. Now, here's good defense. Top six, Brad Penny, Chad Tracy, Jason Repko. Into the wall, on the fly, full speed, unbelievable. With absolutely no thought of himself or his own safety. Just, yeah, that is a defensive support for Penny, who was tremendous, gave up three hits and eight scoreless. you got to tip your cap to that. And tip your cap to this, too, uh, Dodger fans. The 7 0 win. They come tonight after two teams tied in Cincinnati. Top second, two on three. Oh, Astros. Luke Hudson nearly beans Morgan Ensberg. Well, Morgan gets right up. Well, he doesn't miss. Three run shot off Hudson. Yeah, don't, don't make him angry. 21 for Ensberg. Three hits on the night. 6 0 Astros. Top five, 7 4 Astros. Adam Everett's got a big swing there as well. That's a two run shot. His six. 9-4 Astros, they win a 10-7. They are 21-11 in the last 32 games, playing much better baseball. Buccos, beer makers, Pittsburgh, not much to look at on the road. Carlos Lee warming up as the Pirates take on the crew. Carlos Lee chasing this one down. Look out for the bikes! Oh, see, that's not good. Chasing down the foul, taking a look. He's going to have to leave the game. Tom the second. Sore leg. Ned Yo says, not very serious. Probably going to see him on Saturday. Ricky Weeks. There's your future, Milwaukee, right there. He and the Prince slams a three run homer to deep left. Second of the year. Brewers go on to win it 8 4. Love the crew. Our end of the week tradition it's the not top 10. I mean, there's 10. Yeah. And they're just not top. You follow me there? But there are 10. Brewers Cubs are our 10, 13 in the crash, 10 in the not top plays. Ricky nice. Weeks, Paz, Michael Barrett. Yeah, well, you know, it's not easy. Where is it? It's behind you. No, go the other way. No, oh, yeah. All right, the NBA draft was Tuesday. Sonics oh, picked Look Michael Jellaball at 48th overall. He's a bigger hat. <laughs> Got to get this guy a bigger lid. <laughs> Number eight, another guy, big hat side, Kevin oh, Mitch. Yeah, sure. Third, and no hair, just big old, that's all melon. Third homer of the game, eighth day for the Rangers. They ran out of fireworks. They hit so many home runs, and the poor fellow there lighting them off just took his sparklers and going home. Bad enough. NBA draft number seven, David Stern forgets this is the fourth pick. With the fourth pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the New Orleans Hornets select Chris Paul from Wake Forest University. I, this is 2005. Actually, it was 2005. Sure, Astros, Rockies, Wednesday, 2005. Jason Lane. Again, how many times do we tell the kids? Two hands. That's it. It's that simple. You use two hands. That doesn't happen. Well, here's another one for the kids. You, you keep your eye on the ball. Rockies, Cardinals, Thursday. David Cortez throws it on the throwback. You know, you, it's just routine, really. It's all fundamentals. Professional. Right in the head. All right, a little candidate treat for you, huh? Number nice. four, CFL, Toronto Argonauts. The oh. Peters. <laughs> That's the kicker. The kicker. Noel Prefontaine just says, this, we will not have this, my friend. <laughs> Look at that. Like the kicker. All right, back to the draft. All kinds of issues here. We got uh, Rashad oh, McCants picked 14th overall by Minnesota. Takes so long to get up there. The commissioner, <laughs> uh, all right, there you are. Well, thanks for showing up. Welcome to the NBA. What year is it? Hmm. Number two, Braves Marlins. Who forget Monday? They had the rain. You get the tarp crew out there, and then the tarp crew just had some trouble. Just got to get a little farther. We cover up the first base bag. No? No. Let's try it again. All right. Roll it back up and try again. Then you get the wind under there and the water, and you got trouble, oh, and eventually end the game. Brace went. And number one, the worst uh, play of the week, and here's oh, why, obviously. Me. Thankfully, the man wasn't wearing a thong. The tidy whities and the tie-dye shirt. 
<clears throat> That's at Fenway Park in Yith. That is disgusting. That is disgusting.